Welcome to Synthesize This. In this episode, we're going to be synthesizing a plucked string sound using the Carpal Strong algorithm on the Dave Smith Instruments Pro 2. Let's get started. So as always, the first thing we want to do is initialize the patch. So we go to global 34 and press right now. So now we've got a basic patch. Great. So how are we going to get a plucked string sound? So just a little bit of theory. When you first strike a string, it excites itself in a very strong manner. Uh, so the initial sound resembles noise, basically, because you have a lot of harmonics. And then over time, the string sort of starts dampening until it reaches its resonant frequency. So basically what we're trying to model is an initial burst of noise, which eventually loses harmonics. So effectively, we're filtering out the sound over time. So there's a very common algorithm in physical modeling called the Carpless Strong algorithm, named after two people, Carpless and Strong. And the basic gist of the algorithm is that you feed a tiny sample of noise into a delay line and you average the samples as you go through the delay line and you feed back. And what the averaging does, it basically acts as a very crude low-pass filter. When you average two notes, you're effectively removing any abrupt changes, which means you're removing the high frequencies, which means you're low-pass filtering. So the way we're going to attempt this on the Pro 2 is we're going to use the noise oscillator, set a very short decay on the amp envelope to simulate a small burst of noise. And then we're going to use one of the delays here to set a maximum feedback. And the thing that controls the frequency of the note is the size of the delay. The basic theory there is that you start off with a tiny noise burst and you're sort of repeating that noise burst as you're feeding back through the delay. And by repeating that, that becomes your one single cycle waveform in a way. And the fact that you're repeating that really fast creates a pitch. And then that noise starts to get filtered over time in original algorithm using the averaging but we're going to use the low-pass filter built into the delay uh, feedback chain. So effectively, you're filtering out this single cycle waveform that you're repeating really fast. The effect is that you're sort of low-pass filtering this initial excitement, and then it sort of decays. So we're going to pick white notes for oscillator 1. And we're going to shape our amp envelope to have low attack, low sustain, low release, and a bit of decay. And that sort of simulates that initial noise burst that I was talking about. And then we're going to go ahead to the delay section, pick delay one, and we're going to set the time to be fairly low. And we're going to set the amount at a lowish setting just to get things started. And we're going to set the feedback to maximum value. And let's see what that gives us now. Sorry, the amount should be maximum, not a low value. And now you get this sort of plucked sound effect. And obviously the keyboard doesn't change the pitch because there's nothing controlling it now. So we're going to use the mod assignment. We're going to pick the keyboard as the source, which is called note number. And we're going to pick delay one time as the modulation destination. And we're going to let the mod control the frequency, not the amount. So the, the delay time rather which in fact controls the period whose reciprocal is the frequency. So we're going to have a sort of inverted effect here because as the frequency goes up or as the value goes up on the keyboard goes higher, the frequencies on the keyboard go higher, but we're controlling the period. So the period goes up, which means the frequency that we're going to hear is going to go down. So the higher I go up on the keyboard, the lower the frequency of the note will be. And I still haven't found a way to get the pitches to actually track musical divisions here. I think you need to sort of do that in code when you're writing the actual algorithm to control. You need to convert the frequency into a precise amount for the delay length to get proper tracking. So we're not actually going to get proper tracking here. So as we increase the modulation amount, as you can see, we're not actually tracking proper scale. But as I go up, the pitch goes lower. 
Or does it go down? Pitch goes higher. And then you can play with the delay on the envelope. You're going to add some release. Play with the feedback. You get this sort of dulcimer effect, which works well with a quick arpeggiator. So let's add a quick arpeggiator for now. Obviously the pitch doesn't track, so it's not very useful, but is this just a demonstration? The other thing you can do is since this basically emulates a guitar, you can add distortion and sort of simulate an electric guitar. I'm going to try to keep the volume down for this. Hey guys, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and share it with your friends. Also, be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with future videos like this one. I'll see you guys later.